How's everyone doing? Today I have a Blu-ray update with five pickups. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. And they are all from Warner Archive. And Warner Archive has been doing a great job with their releases um, as far as transfers and also selection of titles. Uh, first up is Wolfen, which is not really a werewolf movie. It's more of a kind of a Native American mythology um, like shape-shifting creature kind of movie, which they don't really show. They show like the red glowing eyes. Uh, this is kind of Predator-esque before Predator. This is from 1981. Uh, great cast here. You have Albert Finney as the lead detective. You've got uh, Gregory Hines, Edward James Olmos. Um, I love the look to New York City in here. Uh, it has almost a creepy, terrifying look in certain aspects. I feel like very few films have captured that essence of it, uh, that look to New York City that kind of is in a world of its own, very atmospheric and creepy. Um, and I think that definitely plays up here, the suspense. And Albert Finney is this detective, and he's trying to get to the bottom of these grisly murders. There was a uh, rich businessman and his wife who were killed, and then somebody, a few other people that were killed. And uh, one of the interesting aspects was, it looks like it was killed by an animal. Um, but they can't figure out what kind of animal it is, and then that there's certain organs that were rejected, not eaten, that were diseased and cancerous. And um, Albert Finney is uh, trying to figure out what's going on, and he suspects there might be supernatural beings involved. Uh, it's kind of an eco horror, and again, it's not really werewolf because they're they're not werewolves uh, by definition of this film. But I think a lot of people kind of lump it in there. Um, and I think the the novel that it was based on was actually a, a werewolf book, but uh, they they changed things up here. And this is directed by Michael Wadley, who was one of the people who started the original uh, Woodstock. Um, so that was pretty cool as well. But uh, this was um, very interesting, very intriguing. I remember watching this when I was younger and uh, being intrigued by it then and even still to this day. Uh, very well acted. Um, I love the way they were shot. The cinematography was amazing. And again, I like the Predator-esque aspects to it. Uh, you kind of get uh, that, that thermal uh, feel to the when he's hunting. And then uh, you the look through the same eyes as the Predator, uh, that POV. And then, uh, again, the acting was really good, too. Definitely elevates the film. Uh, I think this one is very intriguing. Uh, I would definitely recommend it for horror fans. Um, some really good build-up. I wanted a little bit, if I'm going to criticize it, I just wanted a little bit more from the, the ending. Um, and I wanted kind of to see more of, you know, the creatures and the killer and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I, I love the mythology to it. I think it was a really cool uh, aspect. I would love to see more like this, too. Uh, kind of eco-horror, Native American uh, mythology like that. But um, definitely great release from Warner Archive. Um, I would have liked some... Uh, Special features though, but uh, there you go, and then there's the back right there. But uh, very happy to see this get the Blu ray treatment. I think this was long overdue. Next up is Abel Ferrer's Body Snatchers, obviously, another take on Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And this one to me, I remember watching this as a kid, this one always creeped me the heck out. Uh, it's got uh, Forrest Whitaker in here. Arlie Emery from, you know, obviously Full Metal Jacket, but he always plays those kind of military roles. Uh, he was in here too. You've got, uh, I'm trying to remember who else was in here. Uh, Billy Worth from uh, Lost Boys. Um, and you've got a uh, Meg Tilly was awesome. Go where? You can, you, you, nowhere to go, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Uh, I love that whole uh, scene where she does that. She was super creepy in this movie. Meg Tilly just killed it. Uh, I love the the pod scenes, the all the different crazy like that scene right there was super creepy too um i, I just love it um christine elise from uh child's play 2 was in here a really good supporting cast here um i, I again i think meg tilly kind of steals the show but it's your uh, stereotypical invasion of the body snatchers esque movie definitely inspired by that and um it's set at a military base this uh family is there and uh they're, you know, suddenly all surrounded, and you kind of get that claustrophobic feel, and that sense of paranoia is huge here. Uh, and it's, you know, like I said, if you love the Body Snatcher kind of movies, I think you'll enjoy this one. Uh, I definitely like the effects here, too. Uh, Abel Ferrer and his crew did an excellent job there. Um, I, the acting across the board was strong. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, if you're a fan of the Invasion of the Body Snatcher and those types of movies, I think this is another one that you should definitely check out. And uh, great to see this get the Blu-ray treatment as well. 
But yeah, that's one thing about Warner Archive. Uh, I would definitely like to see uh, more special features for these. And uh, next up is, uh, yeah, for all these ones, it's like got that big sense of paranoia, like who can you trust, who's really, you know, a pod person, who's real. Uh, that They play that up excellently here. Uh, there's some things that you can, you know, tell, you know, a little bit formulaic, but uh, I still love the way that it plays out. Uh, next up is The Hunger, which is a very stylistic vampire movie. This is the feature-length directorial debut of Tony Scott. Uh, really enjoy him as a director. He directed uh, my favorite action movie of all time, The Last Boy Scout. Uh, very tragic what happened with him. Uh, but a uh, great cast here, too. Uh, you've got uh, Catherine Deveneau, who is uh, the lead vampire. She's been around for centuries. Uh, and you have David Bowie, who's... Um, her partner, who suddenly starts to age, uh, I guess after a period, you know, they can live for long periods, and then uh, whoever she turns to make uh, her partner, uh, they hit a point where they start to age, and then age rapidly, and essentially, you know, die off, kind of, um, to an extent. You'll towards the end of the movie, you find out more about that. But uh, so he suddenly starts to age, and he uh, turns to a geriatric researcher played by Susan Sarandon. And um, that kind of spurs interest of Catherine Deveneau of who she's going to choose to replace David Bowie. <laughs> so there's kind of like a love triangle there. Um, it's, this definitely has an 80s feel. I love the, the intro scene to this. And uh, there's a lot of blood splatter going on here. Again, so much style, just oozing style and atmosphere. Um, it's a little bit of uh, style over substance in certain aspects. But overall, uh, a, definitely a really... Um, interesting modern goth or 80s goth uh, vampire movie and definitely one I would recommend. Uh, there is dramatic pacing throughout but uh, it's very intriguing. It's one that will kind of stay on your mind long after viewing. I love the ending too. The intro and the ending are just awesome to me um, and it has a very surreal feel to it and also just a very warm and sensual feel uh, with uh, the different characters and uh, you know, Susan Sarandon and Catherine Deveneau. And this is based on the novel by uh, Whitley Schreiber, who also wrote the novel for Wolfen. So a nice tie-in right there. I, I definitely uh, enjoy this one. I remember watching it when I was younger, and uh, this one actually does have some uh, special features. Commentary by Susan Sarandon and director Tony Scott. So that is awesome. Uh, but yeah, I remember watching this when I was younger and being intrigued by it. Now watching it as an adult, I appreciate it even more. So a very nice release from Warner Archive on that one with the choice of it. And it looks much cleaner than I remember as well. Uh, next up is uh, a Demon Seed, which this one is super intriguing to me. A great sense of um, claustrophobia in here. And this is uh, based on the Dean Koontz novel. Um, really good, taut, suspenseful, all throughout. Very uh, thrilling, uh, very intriguing as well. Uh, basically, it's about um, this scientist who's working on this supercomputer kind of AI that can learn and adapt, and uh, it's called uh, Proteus, and Proteus is really um, intrigued by humans and human nature, and uh, they kind of try to close him off so he can't get to all these different hubs in different areas and locations, but one of the hubs was uh, the scientist's house, and um, he's going through a separation um, and, uh, so the ex-wife, wife, um, is, is there in the house alone and she's trapped because Proteus goes to that hub and kind of locks her in because he has like a security system in there and he kind of, Proteus takes over and he becomes enamored, uh, with the wife and, uh, played by, uh, Julie Christie, who was stunning and fantastic in the role, uh, definitely believable in the fear aspect and, um, he uh, wants to uh, have a baby, have a child. And uh, Julie Christie is the apple of his, you know, AI eye. <laughs> uh, so basically she's trying to fight to survive. And um, yeah, it is very, it is dated. Uh, it definitely has that uh, 70s feel as far as uh, the tire, um, just everything about it. Scream 70s, 1977 here. Um, but it's very suspenseful, very thrilling. Um, and even though it is a bit dated, I absolutely enjoy the heck out of this one. Great sense of uh, terror and claustrophobia. And I love the ending scene, the reveal. I Just awesome. Uh, some of the effects, again, are dated, too. Uh, that's, you know, a little bit of criticism. But if you kind of 
uh, look past that, I think you can really appreciate this one. Uh, really interesting and unique thriller for the time period. I think it was kind of ahead of its time as well. And uh, Demon Seed. And there's the back right there. And there's the disc artwork. And last but not least is uh, When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth. <laughs> uh, this is actually nominated for an Oscar for uh, effects, which is kind of surprising. But it, it does actually have good you know, stop motion and uh, things like that going on here. They have giant crabs and all kinds of dinosaurs. And basically this one tribe um, sacrifices uh, blonde women to the sun god to basically appease it so they won't be terrorized and killed uh, by all the different things going on. Giant lizards and dinosaurs and things of that nature. Crabs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, storms and typhoons. There's all kinds of craziness going on during this time period. Um... You know, very in the realm of 1 million BC, uh, this is uh, a Hammer release as well. And uh, the women in here are absolutely stunning, especially uh, the lead Victoria Vetri, who I believe uh, she did like a Playboy spread to kind of promote this. And she also uh, famously shot her husband in the back, thinking supposedly that he was Charles Manson. Um, because she was friends with Sharon Tate and she had a small role in Rosemary's Baby and apparently um, she also had threesomes with Sharon Tate and Rowan Polanski and uh, she had met Charles Manson when Sharon Tate was pregnant he came to visit her and uh, she called Charles Manson a weirdo and she thinks that Manson heard that and that was the reason for his uh, murderous spree and getting people to do the things with the mind control and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what she supposedly thought. And uh, years later, Rome Polanski uh, gave her uh, his gun to protect her because she was so worried that uh, Manson's followers would come after her. Uh, so Victoria Vetri ended up using that gun from Polanski to shoot her husband in the back. And she's serving nine years in jail uh, for attempted manslaughter, I believe it is. Uh, but actually, I think she's set to be out like next year. So this because this happened, I think, in 2010. But I don't know, that whole situation was kind of weird because I remember reading a bunch of articles about it and uh, apparently when the cops came, she told the police that uh, a drug dealer had shot her husband and you know then he came out and said everything about it too, that uh, apparently she was muttering, no more Charlie, no more and stuff about that. Uh, but it was apparently after they had an argument too, so who knows what exactly happened. But there was a weird connection with her and you know Polanski and Sharon Tate and Manson and all that stuff it is kind of crazy and I could see how that can mess up your mind if you met him and you were friends with Sharon Tate and that whole situation is just super crazy uh but yeah so she she's been in a bunch of different things she was uh you know very attractive she was had a lot of smaller roles this is probably one of her uh, biggest roles right here and also this is kind of like the movie Caveman with uh Ringo Starr, Dennis Quaid, Shelley Long as far as uh, the dialogue that they use. They don't use English language, they use a lot of different, uh, you know, Akita, I feel like is used to describe a lot of different things. I think it's supposed to be like look or see or, you know, but they use that all throughout. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones that they utilize a lot, but Akita seems to be used way more frequently than anything else. The lead actress right here, Sana, played by uh, Victoria Vetri, she escapes during the sacrifice scene and uh, she goes to another tribe and um, she, you know, there's a romance aspect there with uh, one of the cavemen and uh, the other tribe tracks her down and um, they, you know, try to bring her back to sacrifice her and she ends up getting away and uh, she befriends a dinosaur and I, I like that aspect a lot. She's playing with the dinosaur, but you see a lot of, uh, you know, dinosaurs fighting each other and giant lizards that look like there's like iguanas essentially with uh, things like taped onto it at certain scenes but uh, uh, I do like some of the effects here especially if you're a fan of like stop motion stuff like that and this is directed by Val Guest who did uh, the quarter mass experiment so this is a typical caveman dinosaur movie but I think it's one of the better ones of its ilk and again uh, the stop motion effects are pretty decent in some scenes some scenes it's a little little campy-esque um, and overall it kind of is but uh, if you enjoy the caveman movies I think you'll enjoy uh, when dinosaurs ruled the earth uh, it kind of uh, takes you on that journey. You get invested in certain characters, rooting for certain characters. Uh, I love seeing the giant crabs towards the end and the giant ty typhoon and just all the, you know, kind of 
concepts and mythology and ideology they have and how crazy it all was, you know, the sacrifices and what they fear and, you know, the sun god and all that kind of stuff. Um, so very intriguing and uh, no special features again. Uh, there's the disc artwork, but, uh, you know, that's my only real criticism. I'd like to see more special features on their releases, but they do a great job overall with the transfers and then um, the picking of the actual titles that they release. They've released so many amazing uh, films so very happy to have these on Blu-ray. Um, some of the ones look so much better than I remember, especially um, Hunger and Body Snatchers really stand out to me. Wolf and Two, uh, from when I was younger watching them and seeing them now, they just looked so much better than my memory of them. So definitely very happy. Great job from Warner Archive. Again, special features. Let's, let's see it happen. I think Warner Archive is really uh, doing a phenomenal job with... Um, you know, their catalog titles, a lot of great horror movies and thrillers that they've released. Uh, so many very underrated ones, too. Um, Hidden is one that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. Innocent Blood, another one. Uh, those are two ones I would highly recommend. They did a great job putting out um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, yeah, that was another one that I was really surprised. Got a Blu-ray release and very happy as well. But they've put out a ton of great, especially if you're a horror fan, uh, but a lot of great uh, kind of cult thriller horror movies. Um, some good um, crime thrillers too, but uh, very happy for these. Again, let me know if you've seen any of them and which one is your favorite. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite uh, werewolf movie is. Again, I don't consider this one a werewolf movie because they made it a, a distinct emphasis to say that they aren't really werewolves, but I think a lot of people put them in that uh, category. Uh, and let me know what your favorite vampire movie is as well. And... Your favorite dinosaur movie, <laughs> uh, aside from Jurassic Park. I assume everybody's going to choose that one. But um, there you go. Hope you guys enjoy this update, and take care.